Hello and welcome to Whangaparaua. It's a stunning day, not a cloud in the sky. It's going to be a real scorcher. We are um, versing the cicadas. You can hear they're getting quite noisy. It's end of summer here. Okay, now I get my camera back to where we're wanting it. Right, today I want to talk about the squishy, unorthodox jersey that I'm designing. Um, here we go. You can see the yarn up close. This is quite chunky. And I've spun little bits of locks in one ply. I've been working on the 12 ply one. This is just Skein's commercial 12 ply and you can see. I'm also knitting up Wild Earth 14 ply. So we'll be able to compare them later. But this is what we're after if you want to do the same yarn as me. I'll wind it around my um, ruler here. And we're getting five wraps per inch. So what I've done to create this is I've used some beautiful pole work. Now this is a coloured fleece, it's got all different shades in it, that's why I didn't get it carded all together because otherwise it would just come out one shade. I don't think the camera's picking it up that well. So for one single, I'm just grabbing chunks of it and fluffing it out with my fingers like this. So this is how I'm going to get... Um, one textured single um, there's shortcuts and all sorts of things in here that I'm sort of pulling out as I'm going picking out so let's get this camera back down on the wheel I'm sorry I have to film this by myself so hopefully you're going to be able to see everything. So I always have a knot on the end of my leader so I can just chuck in. And then I spin that round on itself. There we go. So this single I'm spinning with texture, chunk, just how it comes. I will semi-felt this to set it. And the pole worth, like it's a low micron pole worth, so it's just going to glue everything together really well. And see there's a second cut and get rid of them. So see so it's really textured, but I'm trying not to go too chunky. Right, let's turn up my... There we go, that's better. Right, and there's a... So there's lots of thick and thin going on here. This jersey, everybody that's touched it, it's just so soft and squishy. more second cuts. Now I've got the twist building up so we'll let it go through. Okay. 
So right, this has lots of twist in it. So it's not a true guide at all, but let's wrap it around here and see how we're going. Okay, this single we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm probably getting eight wraps per inch. But do remember this um, is going to bloom out a lot when it's been set. So right, that's one single. Hope my camera was in the right right place and you can all have a good look at that. Right, for the other single, what I've done is I put it through the drum carter, made a bat. Um, the only thing with this lovely fleece having all these different colours in it, by doing that, you're just making one colour. So that's why I didn't get it carded in the first place, so that I could retain the colours through it. But anyway, so strip a bit off. Hopefully I've got that camera in the right place. Yes, yeah, looks like it. So I'm just going to spin a default single here. And I think this one is done best worsted um, to try and give this um, textured, well semi-textured yarn um, some stability. So I've actually run out, so I'm going to have to guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm probably up to about 15 or 16 wraps per inch on this single. Now what I did is I got, a, I stripped off a third of the bat and spun that without adding any locks. So that the bottom of my sweater, um, the band and everything, I kept the locks away from there. But that's all a matter of choice in what you want to do. So to add the locks, I've got some lovely basket of mohair here. And I was trying to use a bit the short bits and leave the locks for some tail spinning later. Here's one that's fairly short. Looks like it's a second cut, but yeah, all the second cuts in there are really good for this. And I'm using pole worth, which is really going to stick them down well. Right, I'm coming up to a second cut that's in my bat. I wasn't that fussy when I was making the bat because I do want texture on this. Okay. So now just open up your drafting tri triangle and spin it in, leaving some hanging out. Here we go. Now what I was doing was I was ripping this in hunks and then I was just putting in a lock after I'd spun each hunk. Now what's going to happen if you do that, well it should actually be okay because your hunks should be different sizes. But if you spin these exactly the same distance every time, you're going to get um, a pooling effect, which really we're um, after them being scattered. So don't be too particular. And then occasionally just chuck one in. And 
And then we're going to get this yarn and we're going to ply it with the textured one. But once I get this pattern written up and get a video done for it um, and get it out there, um, hopefully we can actually start having some fun with it and doing some um, different art yarn and seeing what can be done. Okay, he's adding another lock and I want some of this really sticking out. Here we go. But yeah, do spread them out. So we can't, you know, measure what we're spinning, but if we've got it in our mind, we can, you know, get sort of close to what we're after. And then surprise is always good too. So... See, I'm doing it relatively loose, not tight, because I'm after this lovely squishy yarn. So where's a, there's one there. And I love being able to see all the different shades of grey through it. So there we are. Thank you and see you later.